Hi guys, Sanji Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, I'm coming around. Alexa, set timer for 24 minutes. 24 minutes, starting now. Hi guys. Okay, it's Angie Bell, and I'm here with, I think, you guys, I'll have it figured out, but I think it's my fifth episode of knitting um, fibers. I forgot how what order I put it in, but I always put uh, knit, knitting fibers, mixed media um, with Angie. So I have the title written out, and I'll go back and look at it and see what episode I'm on. I think I'm on the fifth episode, I think. <laughs> Anyway, um, what do I want to start with? Okay, I want to start first with, um, I don't have any FOs. I don't have any finished objects. Um, but I want to start with um, what I am working on. And, you know, before I do that, maybe I should explain where I've been. Because I did haven't made a video um, about knitting or fibers or any mixed media or spinning. Um, which I haven't got my spinning wheel yet. I'm still waiting. Um, for like two weeks and um, for the last two weeks for uh, two weeks ago I was just really busy with my eBay business and um, I did have a whole lot of extra energy and last week I just spent the whole week decluttering my house and um, decorating my bedroom and you guys it is awesome to declutter your house and if you haven't decorated your bedroom beautifully do it it is so awesome to be organized throughout your house and have a beautiful bedroom and everything else in my house has been decorated but my bedroom it had been decorated but it needed to be redecorated so anyway I did that um and also I have an eBay business so if you guys ever want to check those eBay videos out because you're probably like why does this girl have like knitting and fibers and mixed media and then she mixes in eBay videos well that's what I do for, my, for a living full time um I have two eBay stores um, I have a hard goods store and then I have a clothing business, a clothing store, a little clothing boutique. And, um, the hard goods store is some stuff that I find at garage sales I resell. And then my husband has a, a lot of action figures and I'm re I'm selling all those off. So that's all in the hard goods store. And there's probably like 500, four, 450 to 500 items in the hard goods store. And then in the online boutique that's on eBay, I sell, um, clothing pre-owned clothing and I buy those at thrift stores and garage sales and resell those and um those I usually I have about 400 450 to 500 also that's why I try to balance between in the clothing boutique on eBay so um and what's been awesome is um just clearing out my house I mean I've cleared out my house and sold stuff on eBay before but you know it's been a while since I had done that and you guys if you want to make extra money or you want to like tiptoe into the eBay world to see if that might be a business you want to do for one, you can look at, I have a ton of videos. There's a ton of other people who have videos about the eBay business getting into that. But if it's just something you want to make extra money or make enough to pay your car payment, make enough to pay your, your mortgage payment, you guys can do it. And um, I have a bunch of videos. You can watch mine. There's a bunch of other people who are doing this. You can watch theirs. But when you go through, I would start out with cleaning out your house. You guys, there was thousands of dollars in your house. Thousands. I mean, I found... I have a video, a recent video. I just found seven hundred dollars worth of clothing in my husband's closet. He decided he wanted to let go of quite a bit of stuff. Um, seven hundred dollars just in his clothing that we let go. Then I found a ton more clothing that he wanted to let go. And that's probably another seven hundred to a thousand dollars. And just throughout the years, I keep you know finding things and saying, "Oh, we should sell this. We should sell that." So there's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in people's homes, and they don't realize it. So anyway, um. I don't want to veer off too much, but I wanted to let you guys know what I've been doing for the last two weeks. I want to let you know why I have, why you guys see that I have eBay videos and then this, this, um, knitting podcast, well, knitting slash fiber slash mixed media podcast. So that's why I have that. Okay. So let's move on. Um, like I said, I don't have any FOs. I don't have any finished objects, but I have works in progress. So I want to start with my works in progress. Okay. I have a lot to share with the works in progress as far as like... I only have two works in progress, but I have things to say. Okay, this is a really big blanket. My husband is 6'3", and um, and so my he wants like a um, a throw, but the throw that's kind of the length of him almost. It could be a little shorter, but um, and maybe half you know, so regular size throw, but longer so it fits him. So me and him did the numbers 
and we figured it out and I'm just doing a garter stitch and here's the blanket it's on okay you guys well you guys know it's on circular needles and these are what are these you guys I love these circular needles what are these um wait maybe it says the name brand says it on here I can't read it if it is just a second you guys I'm gonna grab my needle thing okay everybody use these Haya Haya's so these are Haya Haya um, interchangeables bamboo and I love these I love 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 these they're so they're smooth but not too smooth for me being a beginner knitter but I have gotten into the metal Haya Haya's and I'll talk about that next but anyway I like these only thing I don't like about this you have to and for anybody else who's a beginner knitter I'm sure Vance knows this always like after you go through your whole row after you knit every stitch in that row check your needles because they're interchangeable and they screw off from this this stringy part here make sure you make sure that they're tight because it happened to me one time and they fell off the needles and yeah it was a disaster and I had to start all over again I was very perturbed um so I have Haya Haya's um these uh, bamboos I love them this um I think what I got was I got the interchangeable needles and then I got a separate cable so I could get a 60 inch 60 slash 62 inch cable so that I could do this blanket so um, I, and I'm loving it I can even have it longer for my husband because he's 6'3 so this blanket is going to be really long but it's all garter stitch I absolutely am loving it this is how it's looking let me just show you guys see if I can stretch out a piece here yeah and there's strings everywhere of course you know where I'm changing colors and but that's how it's looking isn't that pretty? My husband's favorite colors are red, blue, and white, and that's because it's for his, um, I'm just showing you how it's really long, but you know, it's on the needles, and so it's all scrunched up and stuff, but I think it's turning out really, really nice. Um, he likes red, white, and blue for his sports team, the Titans, and then also 76ers for his basketball team, so. Plus, he loves Golden State, too, but. So anyway, that's how far along I am. Just like this much so you guys can see that um loving the high high needles and these are um a 15 yeah because you guys i love a um chunky weight yarn you guys i've tried to get into like even worsted weight and i just can't deal with it like i don't know it makes me crazy and then um i have a bunch of dk beautiful stuff that i bought and i can't use that yet maybe as i keep advancing i'll get into it but right now that drives me insane so I'm sticking with bulky and big needles like 15s okay so I love that and that's where I am with this I work on this all the time I would love to get this done because my husband's always like wanting to know where his blankets at so but I work on it all the time okay hey right. the next project I'm working on is another V shawl but I'm gonna take this shawl and I'm gonna turn it into a poncho I thought this is a really fast, quick, easy, fun way to turn into a poncho. Um, let me just show you. Just a second, guys. Sorry, I walked, walked away. Okay. So, um, first of all, I want to I want to talk about the yarn. Oh, the yarn I used on the blanket. Let me show you guys. Okay, this is what I'm using on the blanket. I wish a lot of people use this on blankets because you can easily wash it and. Um, dry it I'm using the Woolies thick and quick okay but okay I bought some of these when they're half price they're five bucks so that's kind of cheap but not really okay because I need a lot of these so then I was at Walmart and they have um, it's still thick it's not as thick as this which is great it's like a little thicker than worsted so that just shows me I'm improving and getting more advanced where I'm able to use get, go down in um, go down in the weight of yarns or the thickness and this one though is only $2.99 and you guys it's actually softer than this one this one is like an 80 20 there's 20% wool 80% acrylic this is a hundred percent acrylic um, acrylic and it also is um, lion lion brand but you get it at Walmart and um, it's just a little less chunky and it's softer like I think it's good it makes this is gonna be nicer than the other stuff and it's hundred percent acrylic so this is what I suggest Walmart $2.99 it is 
feels so soft. Softer than this one, and this one's $5 when it's on sale. If not, this is like, I think, like, somewhere between 8 and $10. So, anyway, if you're looking for something good for the um, blankets, this feels really nice. I think it'd be great for baby blankets, too. Okay, but I also, since I felt it and I liked it and it was soft, and like I said, it's not as thick as, like, the Woolies, but it's not as thin as even Worsted. It's, like, in between those two. Um, that's what I'm making my shawl out of. I'm making it out of Lion Brand again, but this is the colorway. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's so soft. So this poncho is going to be so soft. And I'm going to talk about acrylic versus wool. And I'm into the wool too. And I'm going to have, I want to talk about that. But first, this is the V shawl, another one that I'm making. Okay. And that's how far I am on that. I finally uh, switched, oh, I finally, because, okay, this is what happened. I have the high, high needles that are metal, and I thought I wanted to go back and get those wood ones, interchangeables. I wanted to buy another pair of those for this project, and they just kept not having the wood. All they have is metal, and I thought, you know what? Most people like metal, so they're not going to keep ordering the wood, and she had tons of metal in her drawers, but no wood, and I thought, okay, let me try to get used to these. People said they love them. They slip really fast, and you get faster with your knitting with getting, you get faster with your knitting with the metal. So I have gotten faster with them and I finally got used to them. So I am in love with the Haya Haya metal. So, and so this is going to be a V shawl, but I'm not going to have it as a shawl. I'm going to make it really big like my last purple one. And, um, oh, and this is a different pattern of how I started this one. I'll talk about in a second. I'm going to turn it into a poncho. So once you keep going out, out, out like that, then it comes forward like this. It's the same length on both sides. I'm going to then take as it comes like in a V here, instead of wrapping it like that, because now it's a V in the front and a V in the back, I'm going to take it and I'm going to stitch it down the middle and make it into a poncho. So then I can just put it over my head and wear it like a nice big poncho. So I'll keep going and making it as big as I want for the size poncho I want. So I'm really excited. How I started this one, it was different than I started my last one. My last one I just turned into a shawl that just wraps around me. Um, I didn't turn it into a poncho. But um, this one you start out with, um, you do a slip knot, you do a slip knot, and after you do a slip knot, you do a yarn over, you do a yarn over, and you just uh, go in and um, make a, um, a regular uh, basic stitch with that. And then um, the next one, you do a yarn over, and then you um, stitch all the stitches. Yarn over, stitch all the stitches yarn over stitch all the stitches and when you keep doing that you it turns into the V like this and it gives you a little bit of a little bit of a lace patterning on the edges so it's a really basic pattern you guys gives you a little bit of um, lacing here all the way around which is really nice and it's knitting up really quick and I like it because it's not quite as thick as my last one which I like a thick one because if you think about in the winter time it's like a little coat for you you know um, the, the ones that are made out of the finer ones are nice too, but they're not going to keep you warm in the winter time. So if you do want something to keep you really nice and warm, like a nice warm poncho, I love a chunky, um, a chunky, uh, yarn for that. And maybe instead of getting so chunky, like the woolies, you can go in between the worsted and the chunky. And that's what I feel like this one is. So anyway, and that's another thing I want to have a discussion about is I feel that sometimes as knitters, we can all get a little snobby about wool versus synthetic. And this is the deal. The most important thing, it's, and I, okay, this is what I say. I'm totally supportive of indie dyers. I have, you guys have seen me. I have shown you guys a ton of uh, worse than DK weight, which I haven't advanced to you to use. Um, I bought them from different, um, from different um, dyers. And I am all, I support that. I dye wool myself too. You guys have seen all the wool I've dyed. Um, that being said, so keep supporting your indie dyers and your yarn shops, but let's not forget about people who maybe, you know, they're just getting into knitting. Like I was just getting into knitting and there's no way I'm going to take my good yarn when I'm just getting into knitting, making a million mistakes and spending a ton of money on yarn yet or use or using my good yarn. I needed practice. That's how I felt. And also what if someone, that's what they can afford is some, some, um, some of the, some of this yarn for $2.99 from Walmart. Um, the important thing is the act of knitting because knitting for me is like, oh, it's like therapy. Like I have like so many family issues. It's like ridiculous. I won't of course go into those and there are issues that I can't do anything about and it, knitting 
has saved me. It relaxes me. It gives my mind something to do. It gives my hands something to do. Um, so it's the process of knitting that can be so nurturing for people that we don't need to stress people out thinking that they can only have to knit with, um, with uh, natural fibers. It's not cheap. Twelve, thirteen, fifteen, twenty dollars a skein is it's it's no small venue, uh, no no small thing, and and so I think that um, I think we all this is just my opinion. We need to be more supportive of, supportive of just knitting, period, because of what it can do for people, for people's um, mental health, for um, their happiness. Um, so that's the important thing. It, like I said, it's important, like I do, I support my indie dyers, I support my yarn shop, um, but also let's just not be so, sometimes yarn snobby about synthetic, because there's people that need it, and you're, we're preventing people from making videos, and they can be making some cool stuff out of synthetic, and they won't make videos because they're not using 100% wool, and they feel bad about it, and I just think that we shouldn't be doing that, and I know as knitters that we would never want to be exclusive, we'd only want to be inclusive, because knitters are like the nicest sweetest people I've ever met so um, I just think that that happens sometimes so anyway I just wanted to mention that I put my two cents in on that okay oh this is the other thing I wanted to share you guys look what I did when you find cute bowls because I, okay I was at um, Vogue Knitting Live and they had this guy was making ceramic um, bowls for uh, yarn for yarn balls to, so you could put your your ball of yarn and then go like this and then your you know your ball isn't going everywhere and I wish I would have bought it I didn't buy one and I had forgotten about it because I was thinking about it when I was there and I didn't buy it so anyway I wish I would have next time I go I will buy one just because I want to buy one from an artist you know but anyway you could take like this is just like a bowl like a like I don't know some type of steel bowl I got it at a garage sale you can take it and look I work right out of this bowl and it holds my ball the other thing I work out of with this big blanket just one sec. I don't want to lose my things. Okay. I've got to buy those things, those stoppers that go on the end of these, especially with big blankets, you guys. I've got to get those stoppers. Okay. This is a beautiful... You guys, look at this bowl. Is this bowl everything? Let me take this yarn out of here. Look at this gorgeous bowl. I got this in California when I go to Pismo Beach at one of the thrift stores. Somebody made this by hand. I think they signed it on the bottom. But look, this would cost you in some really beautiful little shop like little vintagey shop or shishi shop in california pismo beach area where i go all the time this would cost probably i don't know two three hundred dollars for this damn bowl and it is gorgeous look how natural it is anyway you guys this makes the most beautiful yarn bowl i put my yarn in here and i just can work right out of it see and the yarn the bowl just the yarn just goes right in here i have two yarn balls in here anyway i wanted to share that with you guys when you guys see especially some beautiful bowls if you can't support an artist who makes yarn bowls, that's cool. But if you're at a thrift store or a garage sale and you see these bowls, or you're anywhere, you see a pretty bowl, pick it up and use that for your yarn as a yarn bowl and work out of that. I think that's fabulous. Okay. Um, the other, I want to talk about some more needles. I have another, I don't have the needles with me right now. It's in, it's somewhere in my craft room. They're called, um, they're driftwood needles, so they're wood needles, and they're Y, no, I-Y-K-K-F. Okay, it's like crafts. So I guess it's like, okay. Okay, so it's L-Y-K-K-F, and they're uh, driftwood wooden needles. And I get these at my, um, and you can get them at uh, L-Y-K-K-E-Crafts.com. And um, those are the first needles I worked with. I kind of don't like them now because they're too slow. But when I first started, you guys, those were some good needles to use because um, they just were not slippery at all. So you could have more control because you don't have enough control when you first start, you know. But um, now I've advanced myself to these, you know, high, high uh, metal needles and I love them. But um, so that's a good place to start. So I wanted to tell, tell especially the beginners, about those needles. So if you're a beginner, oh my God, you guys, those needles I just told you about and getting yourself this, um, this, um, bulkier yarn from, um, Walmart for $2.99 is the bomb for you to be starting out with and, um, learning, you know, your basic net stitch and just learning all your things at the beginning and making your mistakes. And so, okay. Um, next thing I want to talk about is, um, 
things I bought. So I guess, um, what's that called? Acu acquisitions? Yeah, my acquisitions. Okay. Oh, my spinning wheel. It is coming. Ugh. I guess she said when I ordered mine, they got like a flux of them in there. So I emailed her yesterday and um, I guess we're about two or three weeks out from it being um, made and sent out. So um, hopefully in two or three weeks, I can show you guys my spinning wheel and get busy spinning. But I ordered a bunch, I showed you guys my last video, I ordered a bunch of fiber. Um, it's 100% merino wash fiber. And so it's going to be so, so soft, you guys. And I uh, dyed a bunch up. So I'm going to show you guys. Okay, I think I spent, yeah, $5 for each of these. Um, so look, you get a lot for your money. That's five bucks right there. So let me show you the colors. This right here, I dyed up a really light pastel -y pink and like a tan color, tan color, because I want to do a real vintage-y looking, um, when I spin this, I want it to look really vintage-y. And you guys know I want to do art yarn, so it's thick and thin art yarn with like things that look like knots in it and tch, cool. Coolness, coolness, coolness. If you haven't seen art yarn, you guys, look up some videos. And uh, last video, um, or the one before that, I showed you guys, uh, I wrote down a bunch of uh, people for you guys to go check up. So you can see this art yarn I'm talking about. Anyway, so here it is. I dyed this. Let me get up close. I dyed this with um, vinegar and Kool-Aid and um, cake dye. You get like a Joann's. The cake dye, you get a Joann's. You know, Kool-Aid, you get it anywhere. But look how cool that turned out. So this is, doesn't it look real vintage-y? Like that light, light pink and the tan color. So pretty. Very Tim Holtz. And then look at that on the end. And then there's a little bit of beigey whiteness left in it. This is going to be beautiful spun up, you guys. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, when I spin this up, I'm going to also spin. Let me show you this. Okay, I got these. Okay, so this, oh, okay. This I got from um, Knit Picks. You guys all know knitpicks.com. So I picked that up for $5, like for a skein of it. I don't know if you call it a skein, but whatever you call it. And then I got this from, um, this is, um, I don't know if I showed you guys this last time or not, but these are lamb locks. You guys look at these. Look how fabulous this is. So exciting. So when I'm making this yarn, I could totally be spinning in lamb locks also. So it's going to be so textury and just cool. I can also, of course, dye these lamb locks, which I did dye a couple of them, which I will do. So that's what the lamb locks look like. Lamb locks look like. Aren't these so cool, you guys? So excited. I spent 20 bucks on this whole bag yeah. of them. And I think it's w okay, it's www.indigoinspirations.net.au. And um I'm so excited to spin these. Oh my god, this is gonna be awesome. So that's going to be spun with this. How cool is that going to look? Ah! Okay. Exciting. Cannot wait till that damn wheel gets here. It needs to get here soon. Okay. The issue is, though, too, is that I can't just, okay, I want, I'm not trying to, my wheel will spin, the wheel I ordered will spin um, bulky, really super bulky, thick yarn. All the way down to the finest so I can spin all of it and not you can't just buy the wheel that spins bulky yarn anywhere just a second you guys okay you guys I'm back coming around Alexa set timer for 25 minutes 25 minutes starting now okay you guys sorry about that my camera went off so anyway all right where was I oh there's one thing I want to I know I was showing you guys how I'm going to when I get my spinning my um my spinning wheel um how to spin this and spin the locks 
I was talking about that and I was showing you guys um, how the um, this roving, it's called roving, sorry you guys, that I dyed. And that's exactly what you use to do some spinning. You can use the locks to do spinning. You can use all kinds of stuff to spin with. But I want to step back one thing. That triangular shawl, I told you guys I'm making, but then I'm going to sew it down. I'm going to bring it together because it's a, a triangle shawl in the front and in the back. Then I'm going to bring it together and sew it down the middle and make it into a poncho. I wanted to tell you guys I will, just to refresh your, this thing here. That's where I'm at on it. Um... I will put down, it's a simple video, I already told you guys the stitch pattern I use, which is like um, a yarn over and then just a regular garter stitch, so it's really easy. But if um, you're a beginner knitter, um, especially, or if you just want to see it, you can get a visual. I'll leave the um, video below of the lady who I saw, just a second, let me, I'm going to make sure that I write notes, so if I say that I'm going to leave something below, then I, um, B shawl. Okay, then I can make sure that I go back to these notes and put it down in the show notes. Um, just so you can get a visual because you guys, I do a lot better right now since I'm a beginner knitter with watching videos so I can get a visual of what I'm supposed to be doing. Not And then at the same time, they'll have the pattern there and then I can understand what this means. Knit one, knit two, yarn over. And it starts becoming, once you see it visually, then you can start reading patterns a lot easier. So anyway. Um, so let's go on with this, with the roving that I bought. Like I said, this roving is 100% uh, superwash merino wool, so it's super soft. You can throw it after, um, I spin this and I want to make garments out of it, then I can, um, throw it right in the washing machine and the dryer set. So, um, here's the other one I did. You guys, isn't this gorgeous? Look at this. Look how it changes color. Okay, wait, there's that. Let me go this way. Look how cool that is. This was done with Wilton's uh, cake dyeing. It's called breaking the color. So what you do is you put in, like, out of the roving, you'll put in a little bit, and then you'll put in a little bit more. So your first one will absorb the most um, of the dye, and it, and it lessens and lessens and lessens, and then it goes from, like, blue to purple to different shades of purple to different shades of turquoise. I think the breaking, look how cool that looks. And there's some purple, some more purple, more purple. This is so cool. I want to do the thing that's called breaking with the, um, with the Wilton's uh, cake dye. You, I get it at Michael's. You can get it anywhere. I want to do more of this breaking and see what they break into. So like I said, you take your, I, you make it really strong, like um, the Wilton's cake dye. So you just take like a little knife and put some in there until you get a nice darkness of whatever color you're going to use. This one was like a blue. And um, and then you put your roving in, and then just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and it just keeps breaking to lighter and different colors start breaking out, and then you'll get roving colors like this. This is gorgeous. How beautiful would that be? We have a um, shawl made out of this or a... Um, or a poncho, or, I mean, gorgeous, or ponchos with mittens. Oh, okay, you guys, sorry, I'm all over the place. Going back to my triangular uh, poncho that I'm going to be making out of this, when I'm done, you guys, I'm going to make mittens, the fingerless mittens I showed you guys. So that's going to go with this, too. And maybe I will make a hat out of the same yarn, too. Because I haven't made hats yet, and I want to get into hat, making some hats, so we'll see. Okay, this one is really cool. It's like a cotton candy. It even looks like it in cotton candy. These are um, bread bags I got at the grocery store, and these work perfectly to hold um, my rovings. And plus, it looks cute, like in a bag. It doesn't look like cotton candy. I think it's so cute. Okay, so if you have kids, well, it's not going to kill if they ate a little bit of roving. But... Um, but once they tasted it, they'd be like, this ain't cotton candy. Okay, so this is what this color is. I almost was going to over-dye this and dye it a different color because I was like, I, I like the real light color. But I'm like, this is cool. Look how cotton candy cool pink this looks. Uh, fabulous. Love this. So, I mean, this can be one of those colors in your shawl or a hat or mittens that you want that big bang color. This would do it. 
Look how cool it is. I love it. So this would make a really pretty art yarn. So anyway, I thought that was cool. I think I made this one out of, was this, I think this was cake dye. Yeah, the rose color cake dye. Um, yeah, rose color cake dye by Wilton. It doesn't have to be Wilton's cake dye. I mean, if you have a different cake, if you have some other cake dye, you can use that. You can use food coloring. You can use Kool-Aid. So I'll let you know when I've used different things. Like this one right here, this purple I did, this was from Kool-Aid. Okay. I think I used four packs of Kool-Aid. And when you do this in the pot, you fill your pot up with water, like a big, nice big pot you cook spaghetti in. And um, fill it up to the top with water. Fill it, I don't know, three quarters of the way. Add like a cup of vinegar. Um, and that makes sure that everything stay fast. And what happens is when you're done, there'll be no color in the pot. It's really cool. All the color goes into the roving and or the yarn that you're dyeing. I also bought yarn, you guys. So I'm so excited about that. I'm going to talk about that in a second. I bought yarn for 100% merino wash um, yarn to dye. But we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so this is how this... The color kind of broke on this too, which is what I wanted. It just didn't break into different colors. Well, it broke into lighter shades of purple. So this is what the Kool-Aid. I think this is gorgeous. Look how pretty that would be together. Um, to uh, spin that together. I think that'd be gorgeous. Okay. And see how it gets lighter? That's pretty cool. I like how the, how the lightness comes in. Hopefully you guys are seeing this and then that so that's gonna look really really cool I love all the different shades of purple in there and I like how it doesn't take evenly because that's gonna give a really interesting um, art yarn when I spin that it's gonna look really really cool really pretty really interesting okay remember I was talking to you guys about I'm a big supporter of both of using synthetic and supporting people who that's what they can afford to use or they're beginners and that's what they feel like they need to use okay indie dyers you guys um, I know most people are only um, using like sock weight and um, DK weights or stuff like that most of the time but I'm not finding any dyers who dye using the um, bulky weight yarn so, um, indie dyers, you guys, I, I know you guys probably don't want to invest money in that because not enough people are using it, but like offer it and say, Hey, I can do it in bulky weight, you know, if you can, cause I, I couldn't buy any from indie dyers. I did buy some, um, I have bought in the past, um, DK weights and what else? DK weight I bought and, um, worsted because, um, and that was when I wasn't experienced yet in buying everything. I thought that I could just knit with anything, but anyway, but I will eventually use those or I'll incorporate those in my spinning and I'll give some away too. So in the giveaways. Okay. So, um, I ordered some bear swish bulky yarn in natural. I ordered eight skeins, um, that I can dye you guys. I can dye and, um, I'm so excited to dye those because that's what I want to make a lot of my stuff like my shawl, like the bases like my shawls out of and all of that also I want to make all my different things I want to make also out of the well, yarn I spin too um, but it's nice to have kind of both because I could maybe um, dye the yarn and then um, and then weave like a pretty poncho and then for like all the tassels like I like to do um, I can use um, the wool that I spin to make the art yarn for all the tasseling which would look really cool um, but I'm also going to um, knit with bulky, knobby art yarn, too, because it comes out really cool, too. And that poncho that I'm making, um, I'm going to wait, and I'm not going to, I'm going to wait for my um, my will to come, and I will make art yarn for or the fringe for this poncho that I'm working on. So, anyway, um, so like I said, I, this yarn is dyeable. It's natural. It's um, it's called Bear Swish Bulky Yarn Natural. I got it from Knit Picks. It's 100% super wash merino. Um, you guys, you get 137 yards. That is good. And I only spent $7.19 each. 137 yards. Awesome. I think that's awesome. 
and you can machine wash and tumble dry low. So this is great stuff, and it's I'm sure it's super soft. It's uh, it's 100% super wash merino. Everyone loves that. So I'm super excited to get those, and I will dye some of those up, and I'll share those with you guys when those come in. Hopefully that's by the next. I'm sure that'll be by my next podcast. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, I have more acquisitions. Oh, one more. Okay. You guys, I am a little shopper. I, I buy a lot of crap. What's that crap? I just buy a lot of stuff. I can't help myself. Okay. Oh, one second. Okay. I did buy... Also, um, I have one more um, of the roving that I... Um, that I dyed. I didn't show you guys. I think this came out gorgeous okay check this out I used what did I use for this I used the cake dye for this one and it's just a brown but look how gorgeous this brown turned out oh I would love to spin this just this color alone see this dark brown you guys this is my color it matches my skin tone almost so it's like a neutral natural like nude color for me so I just love these browns. Look how they go with my skin tone. Love. This is like, ah. Oh, I love this as much as I love the purples. And, oh. Everything. You guys, imagine. Okay, this. I got this from my local um, yarn store. I think I showed you guys this already. When you're spinning, see this gold? It's a um, metallic gold. It's really super soft. It won't st stick your skin or be irritating at all. I could totally weave that into here. Look how gorgeous that is together. Absolutely gorgeous. So excited for that. And I was going to say this, look at this, that and that would be gorgeous fun together. And then of course this with this light pastel pink, so it can look real vintagey. Love, 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 love. Okay. Let me throw this roving back in. So you guys, I'm spinning with 100% super wash merino roving. Um, I just ordered some um, bulky um, yarn that's 100% merino. So I've got some really nice stuff I'm going to be working with. Okay, now I was when I was at Vogue Knitting Live, so cool. Um, this lady, I bought a bunch of roving from her for spinning. And she has her own farm and um, she has her own sheep and everything. And I met her and we hit it off right away. And I bought like a bunch of stuff from her, a bunch of roving from her. And she goes, you're so sweet. And I was asking her about, I wanted some locks to spin. She goes, you are so sweet. She goes, I don't ever sell locks because people don't ever want raw locks. She goes, but I do have them. She goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you up a little kit special and send it to you. Okay, three weeks later, I got the special kit. Okay, it is AbundantEarthFiber.com. I will make sure I put that in the show notes um she is so sweet you guys have to go check out her um go check out her um her store her online store she has a bunch of great roving and um yarn in there and you can see her place i would love to go to it um it's absolutely gorgeous so um that's it so it's abundantearthfiber.com and the links will be below and that's where i got and she sent me um, all of this, um, these locks. This is naturally dyed kid mohair. Oh my God, you guys, look at this. So she sent me a whole bag of the a bag of it. Look how pretty this is. Isn't that everything? How cool would this be to add into that? How cool to add into what I already dyed? Everything. So excited about that that's what happens if you just like you know you're really friendly with people and just have a big mouth like me um yeah people will probably send you things <laughs> okay um this is hand dyed border lester locks I guess these are the different sheets so lester locks acid dyed okay she gave me a bag again like that and then this is what it looks like this is it's a very beautiful wine color 
I love that. You know, I, I, I also dye with Kool-Aid and there's one called Dark Cherry and it comes out like this. This is gorgeous. Look at how pretty would that be? Everything. That is gorgeous. Then I got, then she gave me naturally dyed kid mohair again. Okay, and then she gave me another bag like that. And then this is what this looks like. And she's like, when you get your will and you spin this, I want to see what you're doing. So I said, I promise. I said, there will be actually be a video made on this. So you can just watch, you can also watch the video. Okay, look at this copper color. Isn't that everything? Look how gorgeous that is. Everything. This with this brown, you guys. Ooh. And then add in some of this blue. You guys, when I get my spinning wheel, look out, people. And I definitely will do a giveaway. Um, once I get the art yarn and how to spin and all that down, I will um, be giving away, like, you know, like a whole um, roving like this already all spun up for people. So that'll be fun. Um, oh, then she gave me some more mohair locks. These are just plain for me to dye. Another pack. And these are just plain ones. So you guys can see those. Those are just plain. And then, um, oh, now, remember I told you guys I bought a bag from that one place? Indigo Inspirations. I did dye some of those locks up. So I want to show you. Oh, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Okay, so I dyed some of those locks up. This turned out really, really pretty. There it is. And I dyed this with... What did I dye this with? Oh, I dyed this with Kool-Aid. And I dyed it with pink lemonade. Because it gives a real light pink color. So sometimes it gives a little bit darker. But a lot of times I can get that pastel -y pink that I like. Again, I used that... The uh, pink lemonade kool-aid for that and then this I threw in the same pot as this with the cake dye and there's that and even when I use the kool-aid to dye with you guys um, I still um, add vinegar they say you don't have to add the vinegar because uh, it already has that acid in it that you need but I do it anyway just to give it extra staying power you know I just think it's better okay I love all this. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so set. I cannot wait till my machine comes. I'm so set to do all my spinning. <gasps> ah! This should be my um my little picture on the front. Okay. Anyway. Oh, stop acting crazy. Okay, this is so cool. And I got so many of them, you guys. Okay, check out these books. These are books from what year? 1972 basically they're called the work basket and home arts magazines and they were a quarter a piece I bought a ton of these look how many I got at a thrift store when I was in Pismo Beach California and um, you guys look at this this is um they have knitting patterns in here look how old the books are aren't these so cool when I do a giveaway I will give some of these away and you can get these old uh, patterns in here for crocheting and for knitting and there's this one green oh my god I want to here it is I want to so badly make this I know it's old school but how cool is that and right in the front page they have the, all the directions because you see how the directions are they are so freaking hard oh my god that will be for like <laughs> after I'm pretty advanced here's another one so I just think these are so cool. Okay, let me show you inside of one of them. Okay, yeah, right here it says, because this is the braided trim coat, it says shown in color on the front. So that's it right there. And look how the pages are all aged. I do a lot of junk journals that uses like stuff like this that we coffee dye and age the paper, but it's already aged. And that's all the directions for, the, um, for it. And then there's the rest of the directions. My gosh, you guys, it is like a lot of directions. Like, I'm like, oh my God, that's like intense. But I love it, and I would love to make that <laughs> from 1972. Isn't that so cool? So I'm going to show you guys those, and then this is another one. 
And every week I'll show you a few more of them. There's just so many of them. I bought so many of them. And I'm going to use them also on um, pages in my junk journal. Look at that, that hood scarf. That's cool. Um, let me just show you the ones I just showed you the four. Let me open them up and show you a couple of cool things. I think that shawl on the front, I think that that's crochet. Because I remember looking at it going, oh, I want to do that shawl, but it's crochet. Which crochet, I need to get into that too, I guess. I, I crocheted, but I've never gotten completely into crocheting. Okay, it's called a peach stale. I don't know why it's called a oh, peach stall. Oh, a peach stole. <laughs> anyway, I guess a stole is a scarf. And there's the directions for it right there. And it's crochet, I think. Yeah, it's crochet. Because I remember I looked it up right away because I was like, oh, I want that. Oh, my God, you guys. Check out this man's textured vest in knit. Yeah. And the mustache. <laughs> so cool. Look at this. This little girl wearing a poncho. How cute. So these are just really neat for me to look at. Neat to be able to eventually knit out of these. And also... Um, also to use in my junk journals vintage junk journals so i showed you guys those i have a bunch more and every week we'll keep going through these are all done so make sure i put that there okay also i got this is just at walmart and this is when i was getting some of my yarn there um for my husband's blanket and this um poncho that i'm knitting it says learn to knit okay the reason i got this this is what it looks like there's only five bucks Okay, there's a couple of things in here that I want to do, especially for Christmas gifts and just stuff for myself. It teaches you how to cast on. So for beginners, that's cool. It teaches you the basic knit, knit stitch. Because some people learn better by like reading like this. This is the basic pearl. So, and I learn better by seeing it. Like I don't really do well with like written directions. I do better... Um, I do better with um, just being able to watch it. That's a lot of times when, I'll t when I'm making something, I tell you guys, um, I tell you guys the video to go watch instead of like the pattern to go by, because right now that's what works better for me. So anyway, um, I'm gonna show you some projects I liked in here that they did that I thought was really cool. Oh, that's cute. I didn't even see this. You guys, let me have a lip balm cozy. Uh, everything. How cool would that to be to buy like some lip, especially some all natural lip balms. I even make lip balm. I could, and I even I, my herb store. They have the um the little plastic container that lip balms come in, and I can make my own lip balms and then make little cozies to give to my friends, <sighs> and make extras for for giveaways. I'm gonna do that. Okay, then. It tells you how to make spa cloths. Okay. And I think those would be great gifts for Christmas time. And then you guys look, leg warmers. Okay. All this is, is pearl and the knit stitch. I am so making tons of those. In fact, I forgot. Um, with the poncho, that same, that same um, yarn, I want to make the poncho. I want to make the fingerless mitts out of it. And then I'd love to have leg warmers to match so everything they also have the fingerless mitts in here um which i probably want to try these because i think it's purling and it's right side purl two stitches knit two stitches across yeah i want to try these because there's something different and it's not that's easy enough for me so i want to try those ones because the other ones i made were just all um garter stitch which is just all the basic stitch this I thought was so cute to make an iPod cozy. Now they went ahead and, um, what do you call it? Um, 